Hi, I'm Mark Taylor, and it's time again for the Mark Taylor Show. This week's guest, is, I'm welcoming back Gustav Koyman, uh, the well, we'll call, I don't know what we'll call you, a Dutch geologist. How's that sound? Is, Sounds good to uh, me. I, you've yeah. probably been called worse than that, haven't you? Absolutely, yeah. <laughs> By better people. <laughs> <laughs> uh, actually, Gustav is not back here to talk about geology this week and uh, his life in Canada. He's here to talk about woodlot management and ownership. I mean, you, you bought some wood, a, a woodlot here in Canada when you moved here, right? Yeah, that's right. I, I actually didn't want it. Uh, it was my wife who said, uh, why don't we buy that, uh, that, that woodlot that is uh, on the market? So our kids can play there. Right. And uh, in the end, we, uh, we took a liking to the, to the woodlot. And we started to make uh, trails and we, we burned uh, trash. And eventually, I got involved with uh, woodlot owner organizations like uh, the marketing board. Um, uh, I got some advice from, uh, from foresters, actually a lot of advice from foresters. And started to do what I think was the, the right thing for the woodlot. This, this, this stuff was all new to you. You really never oh, had much abs- experience with it back in the homeland, right? I mean, this is new stuff to you. A woodlot of uh, almost 30 acres. You have to be a millionaire uh, to own such a piece of land in, uh, in the Netherlands. Wow. So, uh, no, no, this was something, uh, something fantastic for us. Uh, so over the years, we have done um, a lot of uh, work in the woodlot. Uh, the first thing we had to do was uh, make access. It had no access. Okay. So we put in an, uh, an old weather road. Uh, we put in uh, various culverts. And then we started to do uh, silviculture treatments to, uh, to the different stands, like uh, pre-commercial thinning. Uh, commercial thinning, uh, harvesting. Which basically gets rid of, uh, it's, it allows the trees to flourish, right? right. And, it gets, yeah. and there's fer- it provides fertilizer for them and things like that. Yeah. People that are not familiar yeah. with it, but that's yeah. with thinning saws. And, and I did a lot of, uh, of pruning. Okay. I, I think uh, pruning is very uh, therapeutical. And uh, you get the dead branches on, on the uh, the forest floor fairly quickly, right. so it starts to, uh, to decay. Okay. Um, and then uh, we got the wood stove also in the, in the beginning, and I thought the wood stove was just uh, fantastic. Um, there's no heat the, like it, is there? There's no heat like it. No, no, we are kindred spirits there, uh, Mark. Yep, yes. So I always wondered how many people in New Brunswick would use uh, wood as a, as a fuel. And, uh, the figures are actually hard to, uh, to get by, but I got them from the state of Maine. Uh, they consume about uh, half a million cord of uh, firewood uh, a year of, on a population of, let's say, uh, just over a million. Okay. Also, the New England states, uh, firewood and wood stoves are very, very popular. Yep. About 50% of the uh, rural population of Vermont is also using uh, firewood. That, that would include the pellets as well, right? I mean, uh, that was just uh, plain firewood. Oh, okay. Yeah, plain firewood. Um, <clears throat> I think that, uh, particularly in Europe, um, fire firewood uh, gets rehabilitated. Right. Uh, it becomes fashionable. Uh, Two hundred years ago, the forest in Europe were uh, were cut, uh, particularly in England and France and the Swiss was made to, uh, to coal. And now you see that people are coming back to, uh, to wood, uh, particularly in, uh, in France, and the government is also stimulating that. Uh, there are now almost nine million families in France that are using wood for their, their wood stoves, their fireplace inserts, uh, their pallet stoves. Right. Um, uh, and, and, and wood furnaces. Well, coal is, is kind of looked down upon now. Cool. As, as coal like, is dirty. Yes. Coal yes. is very dirty. Nobody and likes it. No, no. no. And, and as you say, at one yeah. time, it was the thing to do. That's right. Yeah. So, so how you say your, your land is what, 30 acres? It's, uh, it's 28, yeah, Tw- almost 30 okay. acres. Okay, and yeah. what, is there hardwood, softwood, all a it's, mix? It's uh, 80% uh, softwood and 20% uh, hardwood. Okay. Well, it's mostly uh, spruce, fir, and, uh, and tamarack, and also quite a bit of, uh, of cedar. Okay. 
so we have harvested uh, that in, in the last number of years and uh, I al always like to see local people work there and I like to see the, uh, uh, the, the forest products go to lo a local sawmill or yep. that local people are, uh, are using it, including firewood. Right. Um, I think it is uh, fantastic to know that uh, that woodlot has given so much uh, firewood over the years and you know who were the customers, et cetera. Yeah. Did you use any of the, the lumber from it or are you more, more uh, or less? Yeah, my, uh, my deck, it's a cedar deck and that was, uh, that was built from, uh, from uh, cedar from the woodlot. L yeah. Long lasting, obviously. I mean, it's, yeah, it and if you treat it right, it'll it's, right. It last a, a long time. I think it's already about 20 years old and uh, occasionally I have to, uh, to replace a plank, but uh, that's yep. about it. So you're saying that when you're you're looking at the uh, the, the world picture, right? I mean, that's yeah. kind of a glo the glo you went globally when you were uh, looking around to see yeah. what what basically what was out there for in the wood business. So, yeah. uh, and years afterward, you and your son were involved in a what we call that a fact finding mission. Was that would well, you call that? We didn't really know what to call it. <laughs> uh, we said, look, we're going to uh, to Finland. Uh, we want to see how the people look like. Yep. What do they eat? Uh, how do their houses look like? Uh, how are their roads? Uh, how do they heat their homes? Right. So we didn't have a particular uh, agenda. We said, we're going to drive around, uh, not over the main roads, but over the, the secondary roads and see if we can meet any, uh, any Finns because one thing I really liked to do in Finland was to meet a private woodlot owner. Right. And, uh, Somebody that was in a similar situation that you were in, that's that you right. relate to. Yeah, and it's not that you can look that up in the yellow pages on no, the, the woodlot so. on this no. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and find somebody. So we, uh, we landed in, uh, in Helsinki and then we were um, immediately already by, surprised by certain things. Like uh, the sun was quite, quite low in the sky. And it was only, let's say, mid-afternoon. So you think, hey, it's going to be dark shortly. Right. No, it doesn't become dark. But then you look it up on, uh, on the school atlas again. Yep. Oh, yes, exactly, <laughs> which we alluded to last week, yes. Um, uh, and then you see that, uh, that Helsinki, in the very southern part of, uh, of Finland, uh, is the same uh, latitude as, uh, as uh, Whitehorse, Yukon. Right. So it's really a Nordic uh, country. Yes. Then we walked to the, the market along the harbor uh, to look at local products, uh, produce, etc. And right. we were surprised by the amount of, uh, of mushrooms and berries that were uh, for sale there. Because the Finns have uh, the right to forage in, uh, in, in the woods. Okay. That means that they can go anywhere to look for mushrooms, to look for berries and to look for wild plants. Even if the land is owned uh, privately, they have the right. Oh, you to can't! Go. You can't put no trespassing signs That's up right. or anything. That's right. Not no. If Everything's want, free for the taking. If you want to drive over the the property, you have to ask for permission. If you want to uh, to start uh, a fire or something like that, or you want to camp for a number of days, then you have to ask permission. But you have the right to collect uh, to collect berries and mushrooms. Wow. Yeah, that is yeah, yeah. That's quite quite interesting. Yeah, it's certainly uh, not like here. And they're quite fanatic about uh, collecting uh, berries. Uh, there were statistics that uh, over 50% of the Finns, regardless of social status, go into the woods more than six times a year to collect uh, berries. And oh. they collect in, in total about 50 million kilos of, uh, of berries. Wow. It's a bit like the, like the Newfoundlanders. Yes. Uh, they, they also love their berries and collect yep. berries. So, yeah. It's another uh, another Nordic country. Well, I, I read and I that Finland has the largest forest of, of all of Europe, any country in Europe, right? Yeah. yeah. Which is uh, obviously something that intrigued you. I mean, that's yes, that is why we we picked uh, Finland because uh, I think about seventy percent of the of the land is uh, covered in, uh, in in forest. And and I read something. That I, I'm assuming it's fairly new information. Was that they have more wood now than they did like at the turn of the 20th century. They oh, have yeah. beca because of, uh, of planting and things like that and, and, and the management. So you, yeah. you get into that, I'm assuming, right? Yeah, 
Yeah, the, the Finns actually have, uh, in, indeed, just as you said, they have more wood than they consume. And uh, the forest is, uh, is, growing, is growing every, uh, every year. Yeah. So one of the, the problems uh, Finland has is that it doesn't have any fossil fuels. Okay. It doesn't have oil, it doesn't have natural gas. So they have to use their trees uh, for, for heating. Or, or for import, this, uh, which is, or I'm sure, import. very expensive. Yeah, yeah right. Yes. So I, I got to know a private woodlot owner in Finland. Uh, okay. We picked a, a bed and breakfast. And, uh, it was on a farm. Uh, we found out that the gentleman had about uh, 75 uh, hectares of uh, forest. And normally uh, a farm also has fields. Okay. So he also has uh, 37 hectares of, uh, of fields. So in total the land holding was about 107 uh, hectares. And that, that's a fair size in, uh, in, in Finland. I would think so. Yep. Because there are um, many, many uh, uh, woodlot owners. They're, and they're family owned, and as they're, a, that's a family right. farm, yeah. they call it almost. It's, it's family it's farms, you're right, Mark. Yep. Yeah. It goes from one generation to the other. Even, uh, say, the small woodlots. A small woodlot is uh, about two hectares, and it goes as high as 100 hectares. And I think there are uh, almost 400,000 of those uh, private woodlots. Okay. So, um, two thirds of what uh, the industry is using in Finland comes from private woodlots. Okay. Because I asked uh, the gentleman where we stayed, he said uh, he just had 10 hectares cut by Stora Enzo. Stora Enzo is one of the largest. Uh, uh, Finnish uh, uh, forestry companies. Now, would that we, have we, been we, a, a clear cut or selective? Ten, 10 hectares was, uh, I would call it a clear cut. Some some okay. seed trees were left behind. So out of the, the 75 acres, uh, he had uh, 10, uh, 75 hectares, he had uh, 10 hectares cut. Right. So I was very interested. Uh, what, what, how much money did you get for it? Bingo. Yeah, that's, that's, that's uh, probably really one thing I'd be interested yeah. in. He said, uh, what, what were your stumpage uh, payments? So he gave me the stumpage payments and they were, they were high. So higher than what you were getting? Oh, much higher than, than we were getting. Okay. On the other hand, the woodlot is also much more productive than uh, what we are used to in New Brunswick. Okay. Um, his woodlot had about uh, between 55 and uh, 60 cord uh, to the to the acre. Okay. And we we struggled to get 15 or 20 wow. cord to the acre. Wow. So they come in with their uh, with their equipment, and they, in a short time they can uh, they can harvest a lot of a lot of trees, and that's why uh, uh, the payments can be higher. Well, I was going to say, and his trees were probably. <laughs> Bigger round and yeah. probably higher, right? I mean, than what you were used we, to. We know, <coughs> we know that uh, on the plantations here, Norway spruce is used, and we've now seen stands of mature uh, Norway spruce. Um, uh, these trees are, let's say, about that in diameter. They are 120 to 150 uh, years old. Okay. Uh, what I was wondering, you now you mentioned the clear cutting. Did they observe the same sort of rules or laws that we have here as uh, like uh, cutting near a stream and things oh, like yeah. that or is that yeah. is that commonplace area yeah, or, like or? Uh, flagging trees with nests and uh, respecting the boundaries okay leaving certain trees behind yeah that uh, that is quite stringent there as well now would they have similar equipment that we would ha have here i mean they, obviously they 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 probably might use a chainsaw for a a little bit, but are these oh, are these are the big ones, right? I mean, they're, they're, they're these, you say they hire outside contractors to come in. I have never seen somebody with a chainsaw no, in, uh, okay. in Finland. It is all very much uh, mechanized. Okay. And they expect also that uh, in the future that a lot of this harvesting will be done by robots. So nobody will be in the woods. It will be all done from uh, from somewhere else. Okay. It's like underground mining uh, in Canada. Uh, some of that is carried out from an office in Toronto. Right. So I think that's the future uh, to uh, to go for. Would robots. they do some selective cutting 
like, do they go in and pick a few like trees that have got to go? I mean, if they were just looking for, let's say, cedar or something like that, and they wouldn't just take that out, or everything is just um, clear? They don't. They don't have many species. Oh, There's okay. Just Norway spruce, uh, Scott pine, and um, uh, silver uh, silver birch. Okay. That are the the main species. Uh, you don't see anything else. Um, all lands are managed intensively. Immediately outside Helsinki, you start to see forest management. Uh, they don't cut large areas. It's normally not more than an, uh, an acre or uh, a couple of acres, but every piece is managed. Right. And after uh, a few hundred kilometers, it comes predictable. You say, oh yeah, I've seen that before. I've seen that before. Okay. Um, uh, in the end, it becomes a bit uh, monotonous. It's it always the same. Uh, the uneven aged uh, stands are mature, less mature, uh, thinned, not thinned, et cetera, et cetera. To there, now you, we mentioned uh, they they do plant trees. For every tree they cut down, they plant another one, right? I mean, that's is that the rule well, of thumb? that is, uh, I, I doubt that very much. It looks more like uh, uh, in certain areas it's needed that, uh, that they plant trees, but in other areas it's, uh, it's not needed. Only about one-fifth of the land is, uh, is, is replanted or is planted. Now, would their trees grow faster than ours? Would it, like, if it go from the, the seedling to, you know, harvest quicker, quicker than us? Would... Maybe, maybe somewhat, uh, somewhat faster. It is a fairly uh, humid uh, climate, but you mentioned they and don't have the sun that we probably do here. Uh, though. No, but they have uh, they have a fair bit of uh, uh, let's say of, of milder weather because of the uh, the Gulf Stream from the Atlantic Ocean that uh, that comes inside. So the climate in in general is uh, is a little bit milder in southern Finland. Of course, in northern Finland, around uh, the Arctic Circle and uh, and beyond, it's uh, it doesn't grow that fast. Okay, so, so what were some of the things, is there anything that struck you, the difference between what you were accustomed to and what they were accustomed to? Like, was there differences you said, wow, and did you tell them, say, well, this is what we do over in Canada? And then, yeah, then one, one of the things that, uh, that struck me that, that the woodlot owners are, are mostly farmers. So a farmer has a field for wheat, for potatoes, for this and for that, and then in addition, he also has uh, has the uh, the forest. So southern Finland is uh, mostly farmland with, uh, with 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 forest. Um, some of the farmers had planted uh, small groups of of trees. This was in the fall, so all of a sudden you see a, a small stand of uh, of tamarack. I said, hey, why would he do that for? Yeah. So maybe after 20 years, he wants to cut some of the tamarack for poles or firewood. I said, don't really understand. Or he just likes tamarack. Exactly. And the golden color in the fall. Yep. And then also uh, silver birds. It looks a bit like, uh, like white birds, but it goes uh, straight. And you see small plantations, sometimes bigger plantations, and, uh, close to farmhouses. And, uh, so yeah, why, why, why is that done? And I don't think that is done uh, for uh, with big forestry companies in mind. Uh, no. Maybe it is for uh, for their own use, domestic use, for this, for that. So that was a bit of a, a bit of a difference. What, what year was it that you were over there? What, uh, what? That was the the fall of 2014. Oh, it hasn't been that long. No, involved. it has not been that long. Oh, okay. That long. So, no. was there some in innovation that you had, you know, some machinery and things that you encountered um, that you you think, wow, that's. No, I I also go to YouTube for that. Uh, oh, okay. I, I, I did not see much uh, forestry uh, operations in, uh, in in Finland. No. Okay. But I asked my host, uh, what about uh, harvesting, and that is all done with uh, with these machines that grab the tree and cut it, etc., etc. Yeah, and it, yeah. it's just like a it chops uh, it, right? Yeah. It's like a chainsaw yeah. comes down and right. chops them off. Yeah. So there's little waste. That, that they have, right? I mean, that's another thing that I, I, I also watched some, some clips of it because I wanted to get a little, did a little bit of research for the show. Yeah. Uh, but there's little waste, and, and you mentioned that they uh, actually make like a, a diesel from this, from the Yeah, lighter. there is one oil company, and uh, they, uh, they are going to uh, uh, 
or they have already made uh, a diesel 15% of the, the diesel come from uh, from forest products. Okay. Um, yeah, they don't leave a great deal behind in the in in the woodlot. Uh, my host uh, kept some of the biomass of the the stuff that is uh, not good for making pulp, a lot of rot in it. Right. And then every six months he get uh, somebody to chips to who, who chips it for him. Okay. It's blown into his barn and then it goes from his barn uh, to a to a furnace. Okay. And from there the hot water is piped to his farmhouse, to a cottage, uh, to his workshop. Okay. Um, wow. And he consumes about uh, I calculated about 25 quart of basically of junk. Yeah. He says it only cost me about a thousand dollars a year to have it chipped and to have the leftovers uh, collected. Holy. And that is how he uh, he heats uh, uh, everything there. And it's all in floor, in floor heating. You don't see radiators, nothing. Okay. And then, in addition to that, probably for the colder days, he has one of these uh, soapstone uh, wood stoves. Okay. So it's cladded with uh, with uh, um, with soapstone. The the furnace of the the wood goes out. Okay. Uh, and then the the heat is retained in. Uh, in the soapstone, so it, it radiates for hours after. Wow. Uh, I, 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 I was amazed because, yeah. like, when I watched it, they said that mostly the everything in in Finland is made of wood. I mean, they, yeah. they, it's it's uh, yeah. it's amazing how much they use. I mean, you don't see them using metal and bricks and things like that. No, a lot of it is indeed is made of uh, made of wood. You you remarked that when they found out that you lived in Canada. Automatically, the conversation went to hockey. Immediately, <laughs> immediately. Yeah, yeah. Kiprasov yeah. and yeah, Timo Solani, <laughs> all these guys from from Finland. They're heroes, I'm sure. Yeah, they came here and made a yeah. pile of money. And yeah, we stayed once in the hotel and in the lounge. There were uh, a bunch of, uh, of of young young kids, and they were listening to the uh, NHL. Wow. Uh, I can't remember which team it was, something like San Jose. Well, they're, Jose. they're five or six hours ahead of us, right? Yeah, they are six hours. So if hours. we're watching a, a game at 8 o'clock yeah. at night here, yeah. it's on at 2 or 3 yeah. there in That's the morning. Right. Yeah. Or yeah. I guess an, an yeah. afternoon game wouldn't be so bad. I mean, no, it's a, it's, a, it's a big thing. Yeah. yeah. And soccer is another big thing, I'm sure. Yes, uh, soccer. Uh, they had uh, a famous Finn, uh, Jari Litman, and he played for uh, Ajax in Amsterdam. And okay. He, he was also a well, soccer is a global game, but hockey yeah. starting to. No, uh, hockey, is hockey gathering. is still is still the game in uh, in in Finland. Yeah. And, and Sweden and, and, and I mean and Sweden, well, all, all yeah. Scandinavia. It's, it's no, but we were surprised how how fanatic the Finns were about their hockey. Yeah. More fanatic than Canadians. Yes. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh really? Oh yes. Yeah. And, and, and and knew the teams because you, you said yeah. you, your son told him where he was from. Yeah, it's so Calgary Flames, and I knew exactly uh, everybody. Uh, uh, <laughs> oh. All the Finnish well, players. Well, is yeah. Kiprasov plays on the Flames, and I'm guessing they just follow the, yeah. whole, the whole team. Wow. I have a, a theory why um, Finns make good goalies. Finns like nature. They okay. like solitude. They have camps. They go to the camp, they have a sauna there, and they want to be left alone. They like privacy. Okay. Now, you go to a goalie, a goalie stands between the pipes, yep. he, he's alone. Yeah. Uh, he doesn't communicate with the rest of the team, he is alone, and it's only... <laughs> and, and most people uh, will say that goalies, as a rule, are a little different than everybody yes, else. Yes, they are, yeah. To, to, to want to sit, stand there and let somebody <laughs> fire a puck 90, 100 miles an hour at That's you? Right. A frozen yeah. rubber disc? Uh, yeah. You know. Yeah, they're, they're quiet. They don't talk <laughs> very much. No, no. No, their only objective is keep that puck out. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's a good theory. I like that. <laughs> and, and, and another yeah. thing you said that, that struck you was the, the proximity to Russia, which was a. Yes. Yeah, they, they had. Uh, <clears throat> They had quite a bit of uh, problems with Russia. They had the, the winter war between Russia and, uh, and Finland. Um, the Finns got the, the Germans in to help them again, uh, Russia. And of course, they didn't help them in the end. Uh, they had to make huge uh, payments after the war to, uh, to Russia. Okay. 
uh, then the Cold War. Uh, Russia is the largest uh, trading partner of, uh, of Finland. Then we had the problems in, uh, in, in Ukraine. Right. Sanctions were imposed on, uh, on Russia. Now it's easy to impose sanctions when you sit in New York or in London, but if it's your neighbor, uh, it's going to hurt. Exactly. And it hurt also in the uh, tourist industry. There were many uh, Russians coming to, uh, to Finland to do their shopping, and all of a sudden that has dwindled. And the Russians also are bringing uh, less rubles because the ruble has also dropped. No nosedived yeah. in, uh, in, in value. So okay. yeah, I think that the economy of Finland at the moment is the, the sick man of, uh, of Europe. Okay. And that is mainly because of the uh, relationships with, uh, with Russia. So I feel a bit sorry for them. Right. Okay, do you ha do you, did you visit, uh, you, I guess you said you visited Finland, but you visited other countries in Europe too. Did you go and have a look at their forestry practices or is there time yeah. for all that? <clears throat> yeah, we went to, uh, to France and uh, you always have the impression that France is a warm country. Uh, you see the tourist brochures of people drinking wine yes. and uh, having their croissant and their cup of coffee in the morning. Um, then you're surprised to see that, uh, that so many Frenchmen actually have either wood stoves or uh, fireplace inserts. We went to the northeastern part of France and you don't see wind turbines, uh, you don't see uh, solar panels, etc. The only thing you see are piles and piles of firewood okay. everywhere. One thing I had was that I, I'm sure you realized that at the, right from the get-go, uh, what is effective against flies? You must have been, like you had a wood lot, you must have known that there must have been the black flies and mosquitoes and everything. Did you must have said, "Wow, what have I got myself into?" Uh, the the mosquitoes and the, the midgets, as they call them in uh, in Sweden, were far worse than uh, than they are in here. Oh, in, oh in is that Canada. right? Wow! So in the morning we would zip open the tent, stick out our two hands, clap, and then pull the hands back and said, "If there were more than or less than ten mosquitoes, it was a good day." <laughs> wow. Well, I, I, I got to say, Gustav, this is, uh, once again, the time is our enemy, but it goes by so fast. I, I want to say that I really appreciate you coming back on mm. the show to, to talk about this, something that I'm sure our viewers are well uh, aware of, mm. the forest industry and how important mm. it is to our economy. And um, maybe we'll do another show. Who knows? Okay. Or maybe you'll have your own show. <laughs> anyway, thank you. Okay. Thank you very much, Mark. This has been another episode of the Mark Taylor Show. Please tune in next week. Thank you.